Hello everyone and welcome to the RV Inspection and Care channel. I'm Dwayne and I'm a certified RV inspector and today we're going to be talking about the biggest mistakes that RVers tend to make. And yes, we all make mistakes. I certainly have made my fair share, but there are certain mistakes that are more common and they're also ones that can cost a lot of money. And so we're going to talk about that today. And we're going to start off with three mistakes that people make oftentimes when they leave their RV. And number one is very common. It is leaving that RV awning out while you are away from your RV. That's not a good idea. We all know that weather can change quickly. What was a beautiful day can turn into a storm and the wind comes up and catches that awning. Next thing you know, the hardware is being twisted and torn and maybe the awning is even being ripped off altogether. I've certainly seen that. Well, how do you avoid that? Make a mental note that when you leave your RV, you always think about that awning and put it in when you're going to be away for any length of time. Now, the second mistake people make is very similar to that and has to do with uh, RV ceiling vent lids and keeping them open while you're away. Once again, weather can change. A storm comes up. The wind can easily grab those lids and just tear them off. But what happens more often, what we see a lot, is that a heavy rain may set in and just pour into the top of uh, that vent and all over your RV and uh, just drench your RV. And nothing can be done about it until you come back. So it's a better idea that before you leave the RV, think about those vent lids and make sure you close them unless you have vent covers over your RV ceiling vents. We have those and we love them because it allows us to keep the vents open and the fans going while we're away with the vent cover over the, the vent lid, then you don't have to worry about wind, you don't have to worry about rain. But if you don't have those, and then close your vent lids before you go away. Now, the next mistake that's very commonly made when people go away is they leave the water on while they're away for several hours or maybe even overnight or longer. If you think about it, it's not a good idea because RV plumbing can break and there can be issues with it at almost any time. If you're there, you can turn that water off real quick and easy. But if you're not there, the pressure in that hose will just keep forcing water through gallons and gallons of it and just emptying all over your RV. And again, you can't stop it till you get back. So can you imagine how much water damage can be done by a broken pipe in your RV with you away? So before you leave, just shut that faucet off. Now, the next mistake, uh, in fact, the next two we're going to talk about have to do with buying RVs. And the first one is that people put way too much trust in what an RV salesperson is telling them about that RV and what it can and cannot do. Now, you know, salespeople are there for one purpose in the RV industry. They just want to sell you an RV. That's how they make their living. Now, not all salespeople are willing to tell you anything, but way too many of them are. They'll almost say anything to get you to buy that RV. And so you buy it and then find out that a lot of the things they told you just wasn't true. It's too late because you bought it at that point. The better way to do that is before you go buy an RV, make sure you learn enough about the RVs that, that you know which one is going to fit you best and you already know what it can and can't do. And that way you won't be misled by an over-eager salesperson. Now, our next mistake is that a lot of people buy an RV without getting it inspected. And I believe that RVs really should be inspected, if, especially if they are used I would never buy an RV 
that's used without having it inspected. And I know you're saying, well, Dwayne, of course, that's what you think. You're a little biased on this because you're an RV inspector. And yeah, you got me. I, I agree. I am biased. But let me share something with you. Even before I became an RV inspector, I greatly believed in the idea of inspecting used RVs. And I paid for an RV inspection on the coach that I bought then. So I am a believer in it. I've seen it way too many times where people have really benefited from having an RV inspection and being prepared by knowing exactly what they are buying. Highly believe in it. Now, we're going to move on to a few other mistakes that are often made when traveling in RVs. And the first one is so many people try to go too far too fast. <laughs> And, uh, you know, when I'm driving down the road in our coach, I very often see RVs just going by me at 75 to 85 miles an hour or more, you know, passing us like we're standing still. And we usually travel between 60 and 65 miles an hour. That's the speed that I feel comfortable with, that I feel I can adjust to most things that could happen on the road. So I'm sitting there thinking as these people go by, what happens if something unexpectedly comes up on the road and they've got to make quick maneuvers? You know, when you have something that big going that fast, it's very hard to stop it quickly. So don't go too fast on the road. But the other point of that is don't try to go too far. When we start out driving an RV, then we're fresh and we, our reaction times are pretty good. But you know, RVs are way more difficult to drive than say a car or passenger vehicle. And they take a lot more focus, a lot more mental sharpness. And when you do it hour after hour after hour, that focus begins to wane a little bit. You may not think so, but it does. And so if you do a lot of traveling without stopping to kind of refresh yourself, well, you can really be putting yourself in trouble then. So don't travel too far too fast. Now the next mistake we're going to talk about is uh, not using RV friendly directions while we're traveling on the road. A lot of RVers do this. You know, we all like Google Maps, right? When we're in our car, we kind of rely on it. But understand that Google Maps is not designed for RVs or for large vehicles. So if you follow its directions, there's a very good chance you're going to wind up on a road somewhere that you shouldn't be on because of your size. Or it can also lead you into a hazard. For instance, in the Northeast, there's a lot of railroad bridges that are too short. And Google Maps will lead you right down that road. But if you have RV-friendly directions, it'll make sure that you avoid those. So don't make the mistake of not using RV friendly directions, either from an RV GPS unit or from an app like RV Life that's tied to RV Trip Wizard. Uh, either one of those will work very well. Now, the next mistake that I see people making when they travel is that they pull up to the campsite and without getting out of their vehicle, they just look at it and then they start backing in. Not a good idea. There's all kinds of things in, in campsites that could be a hazard. And I have had close calls on this myself. I recall one uh, occasion when I was in a hurry and I was just going to back right in and I was backing in and Sherry stopped me and thank goodness she did because I was about to back right into a serious hazard there that would have harmed the RV. But uh, as a result of that, that kind of drove the point home to me. And now every time when I come to a campsite, I practice goal. And that is G-O-A-L. It means get out and look. <laughs> and that's exactly what we do. And, you know, I, I constantly find things that I would never have seen if I had just stayed in the driver's seat. So don't make that mistake. Now, the next four mistakes we're going to talk about are about RV maintenance. 
And the first one is that so many people fail to check their safety devices regularly. We're talking about fire extinguishers, you know, making sure they're in the correct date, uh, talking about smoke detectors, CO detectors, LP detectors, making sure they have batteries, that they work, and that they are detecting. Uh, very often, people just sort of put those out of mind. But, you know, those are safety items that could save your life. So don't do that. Don't make that mistake of ignoring them. Make sure you check them regularly. That brings us to our next mistake, is that a lot of people uh, don't maintain the uh, appliances or components in their RV like they should. They just keep using them. But there are a lot of things that need some attention as you use them. And for instance, things like if you have lead acid batteries that have water in them, then most likely you've got to water them regularly to keep them working right. The water heater, uh, it often needs an annual maintenance where you kind of clean it all out, get the crud off the bottom. If it has an anode rod, then very good chance that you're going to need to replace that after a year. So at any rate, you need to keep these items working right. And there's several others that are like that. So don't uh, make the mistake of ignoring regular maintenance on RV items and components. Uh, it's going to cost you a lot more money if you don't do that. Now, the next mistake a lot of people make is on the outside of the RV. They don't take care of the exterior. Boy, I see this a lot. And I do understand the thinking behind it. After all, RVs are huge. And uh, so, you know, it gets in your mind that, wow, that's going to be a big job to wash and wax this whole RV. And you intend to do it, but... You just keep putting it off, and before you know it, a lot of time has gone by, and you haven't done it. Well, my friends, the exterior is taking the brunt of everything out there. The UV uh, rays from the sun, the weather, all kinds of things are beating on it constantly. It needs to be washed and waxed regularly. Now, I've made uh, some videos on this subject that actually explain a system and a way of caring for your RV that almost anybody can do. And it's quick, it's simple, it's easy, it won't cost you much. In fact, I, I can do my entire 40-foot diesel pusher in about an hour. And I do that about once every two months, and, and my coach is constantly protected, looks great, and uh, the exterior is always in good shape. So don't make the mistake of ignoring that exterior of your RV. Now, the last point we're going to make about mistakes that uh, a lot of RVers make, and this is a big one, is they don't get on the roof and check that roof regularly. My friends, the roof is one of the most important parts of the RV. You've got to make sure you keep an eye on it. If your RV has a ladder to let you get up on the roof, it's built in, well, then you need to be using it. Get up there, uh, you know, regularly and check at that roof out. Uh, check out all the uh, components on the roof, that everything is sealed correctly there, that they're in good shape. But most importantly, check the seals, the joints. Make sure the sealant itself is in good working order, that nothing has like tree limbs has scraped it off somewhere or created a hole somehow, or that it's aged and begun to crack. When that sealant begins to crack, that's a perfect opportunity for water to get in. Next thing you know, your roof is leaking, and a leaking RV roof is your nightmare. It will cause more trouble than you can possibly imagine. So, Get up there and check that roof. If your RV doesn't have a ladder that lets you get on the roof, then get a ladder and uh, you don't crawl on the roof then because if it doesn't have a ladder, it's telling you don't get on the roof. But you get up by the RV and look over the R RV roof and check everything out and make sure it's, it's like it should be. All right, well, those are the mistakes I wanted to talk about today. Did we cover all of them? Oh, no, no, there's plenty more mistakes. I'll probably make more videos about RV mistakes. But what we talked about today is sufficient because 
We all know we don't do things perfectly. None of us do. All of us need to improve on something. So what I've shared with you today is hopefully some things that will jog your thinking and say, oh yeah, you know what? I need to do better about that. And that way you'll avoid making those mistakes in the future. The more that you avoid RV mistakes, the more you're going to allow your RV to last longer and not have nearly as many difficulties and problems uh, that need repair. It's just going to serve you well as you go forward. Also, though, the more that you take care of your RV, the more you will avoid all the anxiety and the stress that comes from mistakes that could have really been avoided. Well, that's it for now. Have safe and happy travels, my friends. Until next time.